We're just past the castle on our left. We're going to turn left down into Wine Street. Kilbay Hill is hidden behind the mist there somewhere. Back in the day, you wanted to play the coach house. So it was tidal until all this was built. Here he is, Dylan Thomas. Cockles and mussels, two nuns and a grandpa. Geez, what have I done? That was a decent pub once. And still keep exploring and discovering new places. I've played a gig here. What a gig it was too. Well, guess what we got here, folks? The guy's an animal. Another hill. Oh, that's riding in Swansea for you. Yeah. Ah, it's good to time. see you. It's been a long time. Epic stuff. This is Wine Street, pedestrianised it now. Probably not a bad thing. In the beginning, it was just a normal street. And they sort of started building all these bars and pubs and clubs here and everything. And it's completely crazy on a Friday and Saturday night. But the main town centre used to be back the other way. And then they sort of re relocated all these pubs and clubs and bars and everything down here. And it's just one of those towns that's, you know, full of people here on a, on a Friday and Saturday night. It's not really my scene. However, that place is a bit different. So the pub behind me is called The Coach House. And if you were any kind of musician or played in any kind of band back in the day, you wanted to play The Coach House. It was a proper rundown, proper scuzzy rock pub back then, of course. Um, not like it is now, trying to be a bit fancier, but at least I see they're still having live bands. But back then, it was just full of rockers and metalheads in this top floor. And down in the basement, down in the basement, as the Bagger boys would say, is where all the live bands would play. It's a dark, dingy little place with a little bar at the back. It's fantastic. And bands like the Trembling Knees, uh, Spiv and the Barrow Boys, Delusions of Grandeur, all my bands, Whack Em Out, Get Down Shep, Scratch. I have to think of some others or the boys will kill me. Yeah, we all played there. It's like part of what you have to do for playing in a band in Swansea, you've got to play the coach house. All right, just name checking a couple of other bands I've checked. So, The Hogs, you know, they, they really influenced me. The Hogs, they were amazing. Uh, Baby Fire Breather, played with them. Sour Mash, of course. Get Down Shep and Whack Em Out. Whack Em Out with a band I played just up the road there in the Cardiff Arms with on those Thursday nights as well. So, yeah, The Coach House is a well-known institution amongst old Swansea rockers. And this is what Wine Street looks like now. So let's go and have a closer look at that completely different to what it's like in the, on the weekend. The Weatherspoons bar there called the Bank Statement. I had a girlfriend who actually worked in there when it was a bank. What else we got? We have the Dylan Thomas Centre. And of course, Dylan Thomas is famously associated with the area, having been born here. If you don't know who he is, I'll give you a little bit of background in a minute. Dylan Thomas was a famous poet. So I think you can learn all about him in there and his history and stuff. So this is the marina. And this is one of the new bridges that takes you over to the other side, which has been completely built since I was here. So I don't know hardly anything about it. Some nice old industrial units there. I wouldn't be surprised if that one with the chimney we can see has something to do with the copper works. Guys, I got a little favor to ask. If you like this video, do us a favor, give it a like and a subscribe. Every little bit of encouragement goes a long way. Then I can keep going and make more of them. Thanks a lot. It looks like I can get across the water here. I wasn't sure if I could. Let's have a quick look at this before I do. As I mentioned, when we were further up, up the Tawi there, up river, it used to be tidal. So it was tidal until all this was built, which now obviously controls the water level permanently from that point. So the level is the same all the way up the river now. But years ago, when we were talking about the copper industry, the boats obviously would have been down here in harbour somewhere, and they would have to wait for the tide to be high, probably up to, up to that level, I guess, before they could sail up and take their copper ore and bring back their refined ore. What a beautiful sight that is, that water just piling over there. I love that, the way it flows. And then they've got like a step system here. How strange, I wonder what that's about. I wonder if it's something for the fish? Salmon, perhaps? I don't know. Here's Arthur Bridge. And who's this character? A certain Mr. Dylan Thomas. The man himself. 
There he is. For all you literary lovers out there, there's the Dylan Thomas Theatre. There's the old Swansea tram, because of course Swansea was known for tram lines, or trams rather, that would run from here down to Mumbles. Dylan Thomas, famous Welsh poet of course, wrote Under Milk Wood, other stuff. <laughs> I'm obviously no poet fan, see people like Frank Skinner for that I would think. Anyway, old Dylan Thomas, born 27th of October 1914 in Cumdonkin Drive, just up the road. I'm hoping to get there in a bit to show you that. Uh, he moved to London in 1934, became a bit of an alcoholic. I spent a lot of time in America touring out there. Died at the age of 39. I mean, to achieve so much at the age of 39 is pretty impressive anyway. To have a statue after you, theatres and worldwide fame, it's pretty good going. Good on you, Dylan, you put us on the map. Old mate Dylan over there, of course. Famously called Swansea an ugly, lovely town. He also said it was the graveyard of ambition. He was pretty astute, was old Dill. What was that other thing he said? That statement on the ground in front of Swansea train station? Ambition is critical. Profound. Yeah, you might be onto something, this kid. You'll go far. So what we've got up here on the left-hand side is Wales's biggest indoor market, Swansea Market. And in the market you can buy all your Welsh delicacies like Welsh cakes, cockles and mussels, and of course, lava bread. What is lava bread? Well, this is Swansea Town Centre. It's a bit hectic. It's all pedestrianised now, I can see. And the occasional bicycle. I'll show you a little bit of what it looks like from here. So there we go. Just a classic indoor market. That W. H. Smith has been there just about forever. What a crazy place. There's a red Indian right there. Actually, it's up there. Up there is where I bought that first bass guitar I mentioned earlier. Derek's Records is still there. Wow. Still selling gig tickets. Amazing. You don't see many records shops selling CDs and albums anymore, do you? Like this? Classic. Old school. There you go, Derek's Music. That is another Swansea institution that's been here forever. This is where you used to buy your gig tickets and then get a coach from here and go to the gig somewhere in Cardiff or Newport, or wherever it was. Absolutely brilliant. I can't believe I missed this place. Just down there on my left-hand side, just out of shot, is a pub called The Singleton. And The Singleton was a classic rock bar. And I played there many a time with many different bands. In fact, it's one of the few places where I've actually got pictures of me playing with some bands there. So I'll put some of those up. There's one there of a band called Scratch. We were a power trio, a three-piece. We were a bit unusual because we had a singing drummer. And we would do covers like ACDC, Blackfoot, ZZ Top, Rory Gallagher, the Blues Brothers, that sort of thing. This is a picture of us behind the bar after playing a gig there with the band whack -Em out I mentioned in the last episode. We had some great nights there to sing with them. I hope it's still going. This street, obviously, after your night out in the town, this is famously known for the curry houses. After you've had a few beers and had a big old party on the town till, I don't know, late. Everybody has their own, generally their own favorite curry house along here somewhere. That's how it used to be anyway. <laughs> Again, you've got to see Twin Town to see the relevance. Two nans and a grandpa. Yeah, big one time soup for him. Fanny forgot his fucking hot dogs. Number 54, 54 Bryn Road. So this one here, number 54. Up there, there's two windows, there's a top floor flat. Kitchen, living room, bedroom at the back and a bathroom. That was mine. I lived there for a year or so. And from that top bedroom window, 
you can see out to sea. I had a good time there for a while. Right, it's time for a bit more hill climbing. Up the hill to the uplands. Ooh, ooh, geez, what have I done? Look at this, I've forgotten this one, was it? This is steep. Ooh, mistake. Oh, no. That's what happens when you live in Swansea. You get good at hills. Can I just keep going? Thank you. <laughs> Don't really want to stop there. Yikes. Oh, this was a pub. Look at that. Another one closed. That was a decent pub once. The Riddings. Closed as well. You might find this quite hard to believe. This row of terraced houses just here. There's one on this bend. I want to say the white one. 74 perhaps? Yeah, I think so. That was a place we used to re rehearse. And I mean loud rehearse. He had one rehearsal room in the basement. Mike Powell. Again, a proper Swansea institution. Everybody knew Mike. Bit of a nutcase, of course. And he, all us bands would traipse into his living room, past his wife and kids, <laughs> down the stairs into the basement without equipment, and rehearse in there for four hours, loud as you like, for 15 quid. It's complete and utter madness. As long as Mike got his money and he could go and buy his drugs, he was a happy boy. People like the uplands. It's a bit of a, got a bit, bit of a creative vibe going on about it. Right, very quickly, there's a pub down the right, I used to play gigs in. There's the Uplands Tavern in there, I used to play gigs in. They have a lot of live music in there. Met some cool people in there. Gonna hang off to the right down here. Now then, we are going to somewhere I've never been. Turn right here, I think. Yeah. And Wales being Wales, Swansea being Swansea. You come around the corner, what meets you? Jesus Christ, a 15% ill. So if you do come to Swansea or ever move here, or think about it, plan your location carefully. Jeez, who put this here? <laughs> Christ almighty, this is insane. I've forgotten what these hills are like. Oh, luckily, I haven't got to go to the very top. I've only got to come here. Oh. Dylan Thomas's birthplace. The man of words was born in this house. 1914. Died 1953. Age 39. And this, this place, this house, is a museum to him. And I've heard that you can actually stay in his room almost untouched as it was. So if you're interested in the works and the history of Dylan Thomas, you can come here and have a look. Just maybe don't cycle it and be prepared for a hill. Okay, I'm recovered now, I'm over it. I might even go up further. Right, it's only been a couple of minutes. I think I can take it to the top. Cumdonkin, what a strange word, isn't it, for you non-Welsh speakers? Well, this is Cumdonkin Park. See, it goes to show, you can live somewhere nearly all your life and still keep exploring and discovering new places. Let's try this one. Seems quite nice. Very steep and hilly. But I do like it. This is quite nice, it's tucked away, it's got palm trees. Look at this. Hey. Thank you. Good boy. Certainly beats the crap out of Morriston Park, I know that. Come Donkin Park, who knew? Okay, of the two parks so far, personally I would recommend Come Donkin Park over Morriston Park. But that's no surprise really, I suppose. This is in a much more upmarket part of town. I don't know where I'm going to come out. No idea. Yeah, there we go. Come Duncan, exit, is my guess, right here. Oh, all right, I'll do the one way the right way. All right, so we left the delights of Swansea town centre 
and all its high quality scuzziness. We have headed through the uplands, we've taken a look at Dylan Thomas's house where he was born. We are heading now towards a little place called Sketty and Sketty is a nice little village on the edge of Gower, I suppose on the way to Gower, not on the edge. And also a place where I owned a house for about 19 years, just up that way somewhere. In the end I was glad to get rid of it, it was a pain in the ass, but <laughs> it got me on the way, it wasn't bad. Sketty was a nice place to live. We can pop in through the centre of it a little bit now. Have a quick look at Sketty Cross and Sketty. One of the two pubs is still standing. That one has closed, something else. The Vivian across, the Brains pub, that's open. That's good. There we go, that was more or less Sketty High Street anyway. Right, I think we just have time to dive through Singleton Park to have a quick look at that. And besides, I really need a piss. Man, am I desperate. This looks good. Sorry, but you're not coming with me on this one. And with that, we're at the end of part four. I told you it might be a long series, this one. Anyway, we'll be back next week with more Swansea shenanigans, more friends, more stories, more fun and games. I'll see you then. <laughs>